Hey everyone, so today we are going to do some more practice with Pythagorean Theorem and Distance Formula. Um, you guys can go ahead and complete the whole assignment because there's nothing new. And then when you're ready to go over the answers, come back and watch the video. Um, so I'm going to just uh, start with number one. So like I said, you should already have all these problems completed by the time you're watching this. And this is just to go over the answers. So when it says to find the distance between these points... Basically, we want to find how far apart the x's are from each other and how far apart the y's are from each other because this will end up creating our a and b leg of our right triangle. Then the hypotenuse is going to be the distance between the points. For the x's, we have the numbers negative 3 and 1. Those are 4 apart. And for the y's, negative 6 and negative 2, those are... Um, also actually four apart. So what this ends up creating is a right triangle with sides four and four. And then our side C here is the distance between the two points. Um, if you want to plot the points on the graph, you can see how it does create a right triangle. Otherwise, this would just be kind of a shortcut to getting there. So um, our Pythagorean theorem formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A and B are both 4, and it doesn't matter which is which anyways. 4 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. It's going to be 16 plus 16 equals C squared. 32 equals C squared. Take the square root of both sides, and you get that C is about 5.66 units. And that would be your final answer. There's um, other ways of finding this as well. If you know the distance formula, you can use that. The distance formula is actually exactly the same as the Pythagorean theorem. It's just kind of manipulating the numbers in a different way, but you end up with the same steps. You end up squaring four both times. You end up adding 16 both times. You end up taking the square root of 32. So it's, it's just all the same. I think this is easier. All right, I'm going to keep going with number two, and you should already have all of these completed. So right now we're just checking answers. They should already be done on your page. Um, what I did for this one, and there, there's many ways you could think about it, is um, I kind of drew just like a very basic graph. And I'm going to call the x-axis the goal, like how far away it is from the goal, and the y-axis the sideline. Um, and this is very basic graph so to help me visualize it. For the goal, I'm going to count by 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, I think will be enough. You did not have to draw this out. This is just one way of visualize, visualizing it. And for the sidelines, I'm going to count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, I think that'll be enough. So let's see. So one of our points is 10 yards from the goal line and 15 yards from the sideline. So that's like point A, and that's 10 comma 15. Point B is 50 yards from the goal line and five yards from the sideline. That's point B, which is 50 and five. So we wanna find the distance of the throw. Just like everything else, we have this right triangle here A and B will be um, the lengths of the sides of the right triangle. So in order to find, um, I'm going to use a different color, in order to find the length of this red side, we have to find how far apart the X's are from each other. So um, one of our X's was 10 and the other X was 50, which means that this is a length of 40. And then to find the length of this green side, we have to find how far away the y's are from each other. One of the y's is 15, one of the y's is 5, which means that this has a length of 10. And we want to find this remaining side. Now the work becomes exactly the same as it was in our previous problem. 10 and 40 doesn't matter which one's a and which one's b. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 10 squared plus 40 squared equals c squared. When you do the work for that, you end up getting c equals 41.23 units, although it gets its yards, not units. And the work for that would be the same as what I showed on the previous problem. So that is how far the throw was. Um, for 2b, just explain how you created it. 
Um, really all they want you to say is that like you assigned the goal to be the X value and the sideline to be the Y value or the other way around. Doesn't matter which is which. You could have flipped goal and sideline. Um, they just want some kind of explanation connecting those two ideas. All right, number three. So we have this kite here. We want to find the perimeter. Well, in order to find the perimeter, it's actually four problems in one. We're going to have to find the distance between all of these individual points. So we need to find how far apart segment AB is, how far apart segment BC is, CD, and DA. We need to find all four of these. I'm going to show the full work for the first one, and then the other ones just kind of, you repeat the same work. All right, so A to B. I'm looking at these two points. The X's, negative 1 and 3, are 4 away from each other, and the Y's, 2 and 4, are 2 away from each other. So um, this is kind of like where the right triangle would be. So this is a distance of two, and this is a distance of four, and we wanna find what side C is. Um, so, same as everything else, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, four squared plus two squared equals C squared, 16 plus four equals C squared, 20 equals C squared, take the square root of both sides, and we get um, C equals, Help a calculator. I don't know this one. All right, I want the square root of 20. It equals, oh, I, I saw the beginning of it, I didn't see the rest of it. Okay. Won't swipe out. Okay, C equals 4.47 about. Um, then you're going to repeat the exact same thing with the other uh, three sides. So I'm going to erase this. I know that this side is about 4.47. And you need to find what the other three sides are. And then when you get all of that, you get the answers. It ends up being about 13.42 units is the perimeter. Okay, number four on the next page. Now this one is similar because it's basically like the kite problem where you have to find the perimeter of it and then you have to decide if those numbers truly give you a right triangle or not. So if you want to visualize it, you can go ahead and draw a graph. You don't need to though, but I do think it's helpful to label this, them A, B and C. And again, we want to find the distance between each of those segments. So you could graph those points if you'd like to, but the basic idea is you have to find how far apart A, B are from each other, how far apart B, C, uh, um, how long that segment is, and then C, A. This is just like the previous one. So if I look at A and B first, the X's are two away, zero and two are two away. The Y's, four and negative two, are six away. So I have to find how far apart those are from each other using the exact same setup as before. Um, I end up getting that those are 40. So I'll show the work for that one. So um, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 2 squared plus 6 squared equals C squared. 4, 4 plus 36 equals C squared. And 40 equals C squared. Um, and then take the square root of both sides. And I'm actually going to leave this as the square root of 40 for my answer. I'm going to say C equals the square root of 40. And I'll show you later why I'm going to leave it that way. If you found the decimal answer, that is absolutely fine. But I, there, this is going to make my life easier, and I'll show you why. BC and CA will be similar. I'm going to end up getting the square root of 10 and the square root of 50. So now I have this right triangle. Um, 
the right triangle is probably not in this exact shape, but it doesn't matter what shape it's in. The longest side has to be the hypotenuse. So the square root of 50 side is the longest. And then it doesn't matter where the square root of 10 and the square root of 40 go. If you have the decimal versions of these answers, totally fine. So now um, I want to know, is this a right triangle or not? So now that I have these distances, I have to do the Pythagorean theorem again to find out if these three numbers satisfy it, if it's true or not. So here I'm going to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and I'm going to put my three answers in. It doesn't matter which one's a and which one's b. So I have square root of 10 is one of my sides squared plus square root of 40 squared equals the square root of 50 squared. And I want to see, is that true or not? So um, if you take the square root of something and then square it, it cancels out. So the square root of 10 squared is just 10. The square root of 40 squared is 40. Square root of 50 squared is 50. And yes, this works. 50 does equal 50. So the answer would be yes. And that's why I kept them um, as square roots instead of decimals because I knew I was going to have to square them later. And then that explains for B. So, I mean, they're just looking for kind of a summary of what you